we look back and wonder how loving you are. Who are we that you chose us at a time as this? So we worship you, Lord. We worship you and we give ourselves to you. We completely give ourselves to you that you will work through us. You will work with you. Enable us and equip us, O oh God. And even at this very time, speak to us. Speak to us. Give us courage. Give us understanding. Let that dawn that is on our doors be able to wake us up, to make us see beyond what our eyes can see. Lord, we thank you and we trust you that at this very time, you be the one to speak and make our minds to understand. Release your spirit of understanding upon us that we shall be able to get the word and get it deeper than what our words of the mouth can speak, that we get your heart and you speak to our souls, you speak to our spirits. At the end of it all, we shall be those very strong uh, people and watchmen and armies, as you called us, Lord, at different positions, to be able to stand in the kingdom and bring down your kingdom as it is in heaven. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Praise God. You can have your seats, worship team. Thank you so much for the good work. Praise God. Praise God. Are we happy today? To me, from what uh, my sister Allen was sharing, I feel that we are so special. Do you know you are special? Don't think this, what is happening is about our president and the ministers. No, it's about our country, Uganda. And that means there is a place that God chose to put this country where it is and how he looks at it. And while, when he looks at this country, he doesn't look at only the land. He looks at the people. We are the nation of Uganda. Are we not special? I want each one of you to say, I am special. I am special. Because I'm a Ugandan. I am special. Because I'm a U Ugandan. <laughs> okay. My, my, my little uh, child says, this is Uganda. When she looks at, at the president, she says, this is Uganda. So, because you are Uganda, is that so? So, I'm so grateful that this day, uh, God is opening our eyes to see how special we are. To truly, when you look at the, the giants of the world, are all turning to this small nation, it is something very important. And I request that we do not take it lightly. Let us go and pray and intercede, stand on, in the gap to make sure <clears throat> that we achieve what God has purposed for us. Are we together? Even those who may not make it here, but wherever you are, pray. Praise God. Okay, today, I want to thank God that he allowed me to stand here. I try to avoid coming here when God has not allowed me to stand here. But by surprise, this morning, that's when I confirmed that indeed God wants me to share this today. So I'm grateful to him. Praise God. Um, I got a dream. And that's what opened my eyes to know that God has a message for us. I had felt like I should, but I wasn't sure. I had pushed it to someone else, to others. But this morning, I woke up with a dream. This dream, in summary, I, we are in the church, which I later knew it was. It, it didn't look like CNC, but we're in the church. And in this church, when we were there, some two ladies came and sat behind us where, we, where I was seated. As you know, a church is open to everyone. So these two ladies, when they sat, they were dressed like sort of Muslims. They were having this, they were covering themselves. So when they sat behind us, there was concern among members. Sort of we tried to ignore, but one gentleman could not sit. So as we are continuing, someone was leading prayer. Then this gentleman came, tried to push them out, to, like to sort of tell, to find out who they are and, you know, trying to resist them from being part of, of the 
the church members who were gathering that was there. So as he was trying to do it, of course, you know, when someone is praying, leading prayer, and then this one is trying to talk to these people, there was some of interruption. And in me, I was a bit disturbed. So I even told this, I tried to convince this man who was chasing them away. I'm like, you know what? Don't bother them. Just leave them. And he was like, no, no, no. These are wrong people. Like, you know how we normally get concerned. This is a, maybe an agent of Satan. This one is what? You know those thoughts. I think we all have those worries most times. And then I said, um, I told him, you know what? Just leave them. As long as the presence of God is here, how sure are you that it will not disarm them? Just leave them. Let's continue. But of course, he did not uh, listen to me and you know the dreams quickly. All of a sudden, as we're trying to go on, now a certain big bang happened outside like a bullet or something big, which scared everyone. And everyone ran out. They ran out of the church. And somehow, it was like sort of a connection to these very people. I don't know, it was like a sort of a network. And everyone had to run out of the church, scared. I found myself with almost alone and some other two ladies, I think, were scattered. I found myself in a place, another one, we are distant, like three people or two. So I found myself praying. I remained praying, walking in the church, praying, and those other ladies also, I discovered they were also trying to pray. But you know, after the scare, in all that, I just, they, then uh, some people were outside, some of my family members were like trying to call me out. You come, you come, like sort of trying to be concerned that danger is happening, I shouldn't be inside. But in all that, I didn't go, I continued praying, so I woke up out of that dream. So when I woke up, I was like, what does, like somehow, I didn't understand it. I was like, I don't know what this means. I just tried to ignore, I went into prayer as usual when you wake up in the morning, but that's when God now started speaking to me. And just, just like started showing me how the enemy brings fear and it diverts us from moving to where we are supposed to move. And immediately started giving me message that I'm going to share with you. So from that, I confirmed that God wanted me to share something which I believe is simple but very powerful. Praise God. So in that, God gave me a message that I'm going to briefly share with you. And the title of the message is Fear Not. Let's read Joshua uh, chapter 1. Do verse 2 to verse 3 and then uh, skip verse 4 and go to 5. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place in that soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness, and this, go to verse 5. Verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Should I continue? Continue up to 9. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people shall you divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be you strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand, nor to the left. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. 
Have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be you dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 It's a powerful word. And that is the command that God gave to Joshua. He told him that he should be of courage. And first of all, he said, wherever you put your foot, I'll give it to you. Then he said, Where, no one will stand against you, will stand before you. Whoever stands before you, you will defeat. And then he continues to give him the instructions. That's what I like so much. When you look from um, verse 6, first of all, he promised how he'll be with him, like he has been with Moses, how he's going to uh, give him all that he's giving him. And then he says, verse 6, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I saw to their ancestors to give them. And he continues to say, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey. That one is the key. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always, always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Praise God. I, I hope you are moving with me. The word speaks clearly to us. He says, first of all, I believe God is speaking to us as a church. And that's why he gave me that understanding how we get scared of some of the things which look like sort of big, which are not even very big to him. Because he says, be of courage, be strong. First of all, he promised to remember that he is Emmanuel. He will never leave us. Okay, these were the words to Joshua, but those are the same words he, told, he tells us and what Jesus tells us also in, his, uh, in the Gospels. So he says, be strong, be courageous, but the book, remember, you have to have that book. Or you meditate on it. Do not turn to the right or to the left. That is where our key is. The book of the law, which is our Bible in our days. It is the book which we know. So he says, meditate on it and be careful that you, you know everything written in it so that you can be prosperous and successful. Praise God. Meaning, if we want to be able to achieve what God wants us to achieve, it is the key which is in that book. We do not turn from this book. It is our food. It is where we need to meditate. It's where we get our courage, where we get our strength. Praise God. And you all know what happened to Joshua. In his time, I, I really want us to know, these men, they lived in bad days. I'll, I'll give you examples of other men, but let's start with Joshua. In his time, he was dealing with very, very big things. Remember his uh, master, uh, Moses, left. So he was a young man. Anyone, you'd get scared how you are going to manage this, 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 this uh, vast group of people of Israel. Moreover, who have a, a covenant which is very sensitive, dealing with God himself. It wasn't an easy assignment. I think if any of you is given such assignment, you may hide away for some time. I don't know if you can just grab it and say, oh, this is very good. I, if I was the one, I would get a bit scared how I'm going to manage. Remember, they are still in the wilderness. They had to cross Jordan. Jordan, there is no way through. Hmm? Those are the things that are almost impossible. You cannot cross Jordan. There were no boats, no, no uh, these days where you have uh, the sheep or whatever they call them. This was nothing. Now God says, take them, I am with you. And no one is going to stand before you. But meditate on this book of the law. 
and be of courage. Have I not sent you? Have I not told you? Be strong. So, and he says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord God will be with you. And that is the word that God is telling us this morning. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. He is with us. Amen? Amen. And you know the testimony of Joshua? He was able to come to Jordan, and he commanded Jordan. It opened up. You remember, if you know the story, you go and read the story. It opened up like how Red Sea opened to Moses. He had to get instructions, and then they stepped in the waters, and you know the order. Because he meditated and he followed the word of the book, that book. He followed the instructions, and they were able to walk on dry land through Jordan. After going through Jordan, and then God said, Be, uh, consecrate yourselves. And he told him that let the camp consecrate themselves. I want to do great things among them. And if you can remember, after they circumcised themselves, they waited for God. Then after some time when they got healed, heaven itself had to send Jesus in a form of an angel. And he came and appeared to him and told him. Of course, he got scared thinking that uh, the, 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 the angel may not be for them, may be for the enemies. But remember... He replied and said, I'm for neither they are en your enemies or you. I'm for the kingdom. That's what it means. So from there, they were able to make those fortified cities, which were all surrounded by walls which could not be penetrated. Walls had to give way because of what Joshua was and his team, that book of, his, of, the, of the law. The, the walls fell before them and they were able to defeat all the giants. I'm just telling you the story so that you go. I'm enticing you to go and read. Read those stories. They are powerful. Read the Bible. So, they defeated the giants. You remember when the spies went there earlier? They came back and said, we, we are like grasshoppers. We can't manage them. And there was rioting and, and shouting in the camp. That's how most of them perished in the wilderness because of that, of, the, of grumbling. But this time, these very giants that they feared, they had to run away from Joshua and he defeated them all. At the end of it, when you read the book of Joshua, he's the only person who's, who, who, who managed to do his assignment to the end. Of course, there are others like David, but Joshua was able to do his assignment up to the end. He got all his enemies defeated. He, uh, he allocated land to different tribes of Israel as according to the plan of God, and he completed his assignment. Yes, as a human being, he may have made some mistakes, but he managed to complete his work. Praise God. And the key was in the book of the law, meaning... Once we are in that book, there's nothing that can scare us, nothing to fear. Praise God. Let's read Daniel 1, verse 5 to 8. Daniel and his brother and his colleagues, you know that that time um, Israel, they were hit by Nebuchadnezzar, they were captured, the some good and good looking and intelligent boys were picked out if the story starts like that then Daniel and his colleagues found themselves in the exile they were captives of the war and then here they assigned, the king wanted to assign them some duties but he had to go to make them go through some preparation someone read for me Daniel 1 from verse 5 to 8 the king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, 
Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Praise God. Continue to verse 9. Verse 9. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. Amen. Now, that brings out to the second point. If we are to be able to manage to walk without fear, the number one was to be on the word all the time, not to depart from it. But number two, Daniel chose not to defile himself, meaning we have to make a decision not to defile ourselves. We must live a life that is unique Despite everything around you, you can imagine the diet of the king. That was the king's table. That is the best anyone would run for. But Daniel said, no, I'm of a different uh, nature or a different uh, country. So he said, no, 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 I'm not going to eat. This food is going to defile me, meaning that everything that looks good may not be the right thing to do for yourself. So we have to choose to not define ourselves, meaning righteousness is key in our work. If we are able to maintain and contain that presence of God, because in all these, what makes a difference? What makes you not to fear? Like in that dream, how the Holy Spirit revealed that if we have the presence of God, it will disarm whoever is against you. It will, they will not touch you because there's that moving presence on you. Who can touch God? No one. Because it's not you alone. So, Daniel, because they chose with his colleagues not to defy themselves, you know the story about them. We always talk about how they were put in fire. Yes? And when they were put in fire, it was because they made a decision not to bow, meaning you need to identify who you are and be ready. Even if there is persecution, like what they were going through, Daniel and his colleagues, was a tough time. Remember, you are, you are, you are not even a, a citizen. You are just a captive of the, the war. What right do you have? But I want to encourage you that even in that situation, the, the presence of God can make you gain favor. As you hear in the word, it says that Daniel gained favor before the officials. And when they continued to be tough on them, they threw them in fire. But this gentleman, God himself, sent someone, a fourth person, to walk with them in the fire because they stood for him. And Daniel also himself, in that den of lions, can you imagine hungry lions, how, how can you survive that? I don't think it was possible. But God himself had to tie the lips of those lions and their mouths. They could not swallow him up. And that is the presence of God. Praise God. So this shows us that at the end, even the human enemies, they had to turn. Of course, there are those who were killed because they were fighting them. But the faith of God fell upon the king concerning these young men. And at the end, it was declared in the whole nation, all of them to bow before the God of Daniel. Praise God. And that is the way we are going to stand for him and manage to be successful and to make a difference in the world we are in. Praise God. If we can also quickly talk about Moses. Moses is another person. Moses was able to stand before the giants in the world, and he made a difference. But what made him be that? Remember, he had uh, disappeared and, and hid in the, in, the, in, the, in the bushes there in the wilderness. For 40 years, imagine, he suffered so much because of fear. That's what fear can do to us. After being identified that he killed someone, the man disappeared. 40 years suffering because of fear. But God was so good that he met him there and then he was able to be given the 
instructions to go back, I believe, you know, sometimes uh, God allows some hard conditions to us for a purpose, which is a preparation and training for us to be strong and be what he purposed us to be. Because I believe if Moses had not run away and go to those bushes, he wouldn't have seen that bush which was burning, but it wasn't burning, you know, the fire, but the bush was on so that it can attract him to come close. And that's where he got instructions to go and stand before Pharaoh. Moses got scared as human beings, as you know. He said, how can I stand before this man? Who are you? I don't even know that I represent. And God revealed himself to him and told him to say that I am who I am. And Moses, as you know, he was able to make the whole nation of Egypt to be shaken. Hmm? Why? Just that secret of having the presence of God in him, of identifying that secret of being in his presence, connecting with him, walking right, and that's how he managed to make a difference in the nation of Egypt. As you know, Pharaoh tried his level best to threaten with his authority, but God had to come down from heaven and make him a, a, a bend to that God of Israel. You know that the 10 uh, punishments that they went through, most of them were so bad, so bad to the extent the man lost his firstborn, who was the heir of his kingdom. At the end of it, Moses had to walk majestically with the confidence, with the whole nation of Israel, after taking all the gold and silver from their, the, those who enslaved them, they managed to go out with that victory. Why? That secret. Praise God. And at the end, when they reached there, fear came. Red Sea before them. Enemies behind them. Now, what do I do? Moses started weeping. Why did you bring me here? Of course, it started with the people. You know how we quickly run to blame. But God appeared to him and said, Moses, why are you crying? What do you have in your hands? You can imagine how God turns anything around you to be a tool to defeat the enemy. Praise God. At that moment, that very stick turned out to be the presence of God and the power of God and said, hit the water. Immediately, the water listened. It's not the stick. It is that God that we serve. Praise God. It turned and waters listened and it became a, a big road and waters stood. The Bible explained it so, so, you know, in a way that it's, it's, it's fun, you know, it shows how the water raised and then they make walls. As you know, uh, they walked through the road, clear ground. The enemies came, not knowing the secret in God, he wanted to destroy them, to show them that indeed he is powerful and he's God. At the end, they all perished in the water when the children of Israel walked out. Praise God. And that was their first step of deliverance. We thank God for that. So that is Moses. And why? Because he walked with him. Meaning, the conditions around Moses may be the same with us at the, in this time we are in. But what makes a difference is one secret, being in his presence. We should not fear. Amen? And then, I want another example I want to give is Jesus, our Lord. At a time when he was on this land of this earth, he was a human being like us. And he went through hard times. But he defeated everything. Why? Because he was connected and aligned with his father. And Jesus made it so easy for us, by the way. It's a powerful thing. When he came, now it wasn't so very much on conditions and fulfilling conditions like in the times of the Moseses and Joshua's. There are times we are very terrifying. For us, we are just enjoying the grace, enjoying that, that freedom. Praise God. And I believe that's why he said we shall do greater things than he did. Because he finished the work for us. Those ones were following rules and when you miss one step, you are, you are hit. It was tough. 
but God loved us so much, who loves us so much, that we are born and chosen at a time when the work was finished on the cross. Praise God. And when Jesus came, as you know the whole story about him, on that day when he was baptized, for the sake of us to know, or the people who were living at the time, the Holy Spirit came and, as, and descended upon him the, 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 in a form of a, a dove, just to show us that the Holy Spirit is upon him. And that's when he said, that is my beloved son. Now, that time, it did not stop there. That's how he moved from that point to the wilderness. Also, fasted for 40 days. I want us to remember or to know, if we don't know, that there's no work in this work that we we'll never find some trials and tests because he loves us so much. He has to make us go through them so that we can be so strong, so that we can stand strong and not fear. If you do not experience anything tough, then anything that scares you, you will just run away. But he prepares us in these conditions. Let us rejoice in whatever we are going through, but not giving the devil any foothold. Praise God. So our Lord went through it and fasted for the 40 days. First of all, he did not die. Dry. Can you imagine dry for 40 days? I don't know if any of you has ever fasted for 40 days dry. Let me see you. Really? Wow. That's powerful. Not dry. Okay. Uh, 40 days, I think a number of people have fasted for 40 days. But I meant dry, dry, without no water, nothing, nothing. As long as God leads you to do it, you can make it. But it has to be initiated by him alone, and you are sure 100%. You may need to do like Gideon. He had to test him three times. Please first do this, and I'm sure. Turn it this way, and I'm sure. So you can do it as long as he leads you. So he managed to go through it successfully. He didn't die. That's one victory. Number two, the devil himself came to test him. Three tests, as you remember, he tempted him. And he said, worship me. The man says, no way. The word says, you worship only one God. And imagine you are hungry for 40 days. And then he says, oh, this is food. Huh? Worship me. The man said, no, I don't live by only bread alone. And then the third one, you know, those three tests, he went through them. And he managed to overcome. Praise God. That is just being aligned with him to be in the presence of God. It may not be the same, but we go through same trials at our level. As it was a burden, it also becomes a burden to us at our own levels. Yes? No, no, no test is simple. Each test is very trying and it is scaring. But when you have him, you'll manage it. And because he walked with him, he fulfilled his purpose on this earth. He took away our sin. He took away our transgressions. He took away our iniquities. He took away our diseases. He managed to complete all. Finally, he defeated death. Praise God. And that's not a simple assignment. And why was he doing all this? First of all, to be an example to us. Number two, to pave the way for us, to make us free to enjoy what we're enjoying today. Can we clap for Jesus? <laughs> Jesus defeated death, defeated sin, defeated all sorts of accusations that the enemy puts before us. What he writes on our file, he puts there in our record. But Jesus defeated all. He put a way where we'll never be closed. The word of God says he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. In him, we find everything. Where there is no way, he puts a way. 
where there is confusion around you and you don't know what the truth puts away for you. Where there is no life and there is no hope, he puts life in us. And he gives it in abundance. Praise God. And that's how he gives us authority to take charge of everything. And that's why he says, fear not. I am with you. Praise God. Fear not. He is with us. In every situation, in any scare, in any temptation, in any trial, he is with us. No reason to fear. The main thing is to identify with him. Walk right with him. Like how Daniel re de re refused to defy himself. So, let's read our last scripture. <clears throat> Matthew 16, from verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. Isn't it powerful? He asked them what they think he is. And Peter mentioned how he's Christ. And then he says, on that rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Someone explained to me, or opened my eyes to know, it is not just Peter, the individual. On that rock, that Christ he mentioned in him, because he says, this is not revealed to you by flesh and blood. It's only by the Lord himself, by my Father in heaven. So when he says that you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, son of the living God, and then he says, on that rock, I'll build my house. But who is hosting that rock, that Christ? Peter, as an individual. Are we together? So he says, on that rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will never provide against it. And then he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You people, you need to be excited about this. I'm so excited about it. It becomes fresh whenever I read it. And he says, the keys of heaven, whatever you bind here will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose will be lost in heaven. Can you imagine that? Authority. That's why he says that at the resurrection, when he came to the disciples, he says, authority of heaven and earth is given to me. Here I give to you. Can you imagine? Whatever you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. Praise God. Isn't it wonderful? Why are we defeated? Why are we scared? Can you imagine the devil is a liar? Why are we scared? Why do you think this one is an agent? You know, these days, those words are common. Hmm? And indeed, they are there, by the way. They are there. They try. But let me tell you, the word of God says, authority of heaven and earth is given to us. As long as Christ is in us, there's no one who can touch us. When they are tempted, they will be captured. Praise God. And I'm telling you, if it is not by God's grace, even this very church wouldn't be standing. But the one who started this church is able to uphold it and able to make us move forward. Praise God. Praise God. Let us know that the one who called us is so strong. Hmm? In Isaiah, he says that the government is on his shoulders. But he says, I give it to you, all of it. 
whatever you say, I will do it. How did Joshua command the sun to stop? By knowing who he is. He said, you sun, stop. And it stopped. Are we together? That's how they could tell the Red Sea, open up and you open. Jordan, open and they open. We have a powerful God in us. But praise God. We are so powerful. Very. And that's why he says that the latter church would be greater than the former. Where is it? It's you and me. Despite all this confusion around us, we are so strong. And those things must come. Darkness must come so that light can be seen. You cannot see light when there's no darkness. When the light comes, darkness fades away. So darkness is part and part of our journey. Let us not be scared. Fear not. Stand strong and know that we overcome the devil. Amen. We overcame and we have overcome and we shall overcome. In Jesus' name. Praise God. So let us know who we are. Let us know that that Christ in us is greater, is stronger than the one that is in the world. He is powerful. Even if they put you in the fire, you'll go through it. Even if you are under the, the den of lions, you'll go through it. Even if there are problems around you, diseases, poverty, so many things, they can, you can take a step and they will bow before you. Amen. Praise God. So the word today is to encourage you, fear not because he is with us. Major the two things, the word and to walk right with him, to follow his steps and also to identify the truth about who we are. Praise God. Once you don't know your identity, you can be taken by any wind. That's our last uh, uh, point that I want us not to forget. This scripture shows us, Matthew 16, the one we have read, he, to he tells us who we are. We are that rock because we host him who is our rock. Praise God. And that's how there's no, no gates of hell shall stand before us. The same as he told Joshua, there's no one who will stand before you. Amen? Amen? There is nothing. Even death is under our feet. Praise God. When you speak, heaven listens. You say, I release, it is released. You bind, things are bound. You ask, and it's given to us. Praise God. So let's walk in that victory of knowing who we are, of not separating or uh, diverting from the word of God and walking right by obeying those commands of the Lord. Praise God. Those are the major three things I will request that we don't forget. If you can forget anything but those three, the truth of the word, walking right, and identifying who you are. Praise God. Praise God. Can we stand and respond to the word? The choir... Can you give us just a chorus that can take us into that point of prayer? Just one short chorus. As we enter into this new year, as the word is very clear to reposition us, let us position ourselves in God, knowing who we are, and we walk with confidence, with no fear at all. Knowing who we are, and walking to our destiny. Yes, choir, just one chorus. As I request each one of us to just one minute as they sing, we also give ourselves to God to see that indeed we are standing right with him. And let us allow the Holy Spirit to work in us as his children. Yes, choir. <laughs>
let's uh, one minute pray for ourselves and then we conclude this time. Let's respond to the, the word of God. We need to connect with him. We need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. We need to align ourselves with him. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your truth, O oh Lord. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you for the truth. Help us not to part from your word. Help us, O oh Lord God. Help us, King of glory. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, my master. Help me, King of glory, to go, to read, to read. Father, we present ourselves before you. Thank you for this truth. Thank you, Lord, that you're encouraging us not to fear. Holy Spirit, here we are. When we are filled by you, we will not fear anything. We remember when the disciples were hidden in that room, the upper room, until you came and filled them. They were able to move out in confidence, with boldness, with no fear and they would be able to speak out, and many were converted. So, Father, we pray that in our time, in this season, you feel us, O oh Lord. Feel us at our individual levels. Feel us as families, Lord. Feel us as the community, Father, and feel us as CNC. Feel us as this nation, O oh God. Master, let your church, let your body be strengthened. Revive us, we pray, King of glory. Master, we pray that you help us to, go, to, to create the hunger and the thirst within us, that we shall not depart from your truth, the truth of your word, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you silence the noises of the things that divert us, busy being busy in many things that are just air. Help us to choose the right thing, the rightly, O oh God. Father, I pray that from this truth, enlarge it, O oh God. Enlarge your word. Take it deeper into our souls. Take it deeper into our emotions. Help us, Father God, to be able to respond, to be able to live a life that is rooted in your word, to live a, a life that is righteous, that is, ho is holy before you, King of glory. Your word says that you, we, we, we present ourselves holy and pleasing before you. Our bodies are, are, are living sacrifices to you. Help us to be those very living sacrifices that are holy and also uh, true and right with you. Help us, King of glory, that we shall walk on this earth as ambassadors on this earth, representing the kingdom of heaven, walking as salt and light of this world, that wherever we pass and whatever we, we is around us, we return to bow down to our God, like the Daniels and his colleagues, like the times of Jesus, that people will have to reach a point and know that there is God. In the times of Moses, they had to know that indeed there is God. The, 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 the times of Joshua, they knew that there is God. That Joseph's and many men that you have used in your time, O oh God, help us that in our season, we'll be able to walk right with you, to be able to identify and to be able to transform and cause a change and transformation in our season, in our generation. This latter church, Lord, make it strong. You say that it, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Help us, Lord, to be those very vessels, to be very those parts of that body that will do our part well, faithfully and successfully for the glory of your name. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, that indeed, Lord, you are our God and you'll always be with us and no enemy shall stand before us. Whoever stands before us will give in to us and will be able to defeat him and your glory will, be, will shine. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We exalt you and we say thank you. All the glory goes back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.